I caught my wife cheating on me with two guys at the same time after I gave her everything. Here's what happened. Subscribe to Am I the Jerk on YouTube and hit the bell to turn on notifications. 10 years ago, I thought I had the perfect life. Upper six figure job, beautiful wife, clean house, two new cars and a child on the way. My job made me happy and I was good at it and the stability was great. My wife loved me for me and ignored my flaws as I tried to perfect them. In return, I adored her and we seemed to be the the perfect couple. People would always compliment us and talk about how envious they were of our relationship and everything. It kept getting better. I kept getting promotions. The kids, now three, were born and we eventually moved from an ordinary house to an incredibly nice one. My wife was doing very well in her career, an optometrist, and we took fun vacations every year. Again, I thought I had made it. I don't know how this would have prompted it, but in early 2015, I bought her a new Tesla for her birthday. She hadn't gotten a new car since 2008 and I kept getting new cars. Therefore, I surprised her. She loved it, loved me. And I remember spending that entire day just taking rides in it and figuring out how all the gadgets and icons worked. It was completely downhill from there. I don't know how that would have triggered anything, but in the months following, she became increasingly distant, not only from me, but from our children. My oldest, my 10 year old daughter in particular, felt hurt by this and would often try to start conversations with her mother in order to get her talking. Some days this would work and she would be pleasant. Others, it would have the opposite effect. The first time I suspected I was no longer her man of choice was in July of 2016 when I noticed she was no longer going to yoga classes but telling me she was. We were on the same phone plan and a part of the plan was we could see our locations of our phones. I was routinely browsing the app one day and noticed she appeared to be at someone's house. Since she had been irrationally angry that day prior to leaving, I didn't question her about it when she got home from yoga. Instead, I chose to closely observe where she went during her yoga time. It would always seem to end up at the same house, a well-off neighborhood, probably a step above ours, a little north of town. I was getting ready to confront her when I noticed she had been returning to yoga again. During this period, she became increasingly distant and hormonal. My entire family noticed this behavior going on for over a year now, but I had had enough. I sat her down and asked her what was going on. She gave me the cold shoulder, and when I questioned her about the yoga locations, she accused me of stalking invading privacy, and being a grade A jerk. That's when I asked her, are you cheating on me? Of course, the answer was no. What followed in the weeks to come was distrust, hatred, and plain anger towards me. It was clear she knew I had caught on, but was now trying to play the I can't believe you think this victim card. But I knew. I saw through it all. When she finally admitted that she had seen and slept with another man, that's when I made my mistake. I forgave her. She told me she loved me. She loved our family. And in that moment, I believed her. I thought she could change. I was wrong. We tried marriage therapy. We tried taking adult days. It seemed to work. We were happy. And she was genuinely having fun. And it seemed like I had the old her back. I was relieved. This allowed me to pour more time into my kids and my work and have less stress overall. My business trip to San Diego, I live on the East Coast of the US, was cut short when my colleague fell ill. And our clients insisted that we reschedule. It was a hassle, but I caught the next flight out and returned home. I'm not sure why I didn't tell her I was coming home, but I just didn't. Maybe I wanted it to be a surprise, but the only surprise I received was when I pulled into the driveway, I saw a Ford SUV in my garage and not finding one, but two men in bed with my wife. This all happened yesterday. I'm finally putting in its words. My wife started babbling when it happened, desperately trying to explain. I heard none of it. I walked out of my room, went to the basement and poured myself a drink. I could hear the men upstairs leaving and when I returned upstairs it was my wife sitting there clothed with a sad smile on her face. She started talking but I wouldn't have it. I told her to get out of my house. I informed her that I'd get her stuff to her by the end of the week. She tried to pull the what about the kids type of nonsense but I was just done. I'm sad but not for her. I'm sad for my kids and I'm sad for whatever poor soul she meets next. I will fight hard for my kids, but my biggest fear is losing them. I know the court will rule incredibly in favor of mothers. I hope they realize that I've spent the last three years doing my best to mend a broken marriage for my family and nothing has worked. I told my kids this morning, they asked why mom didn't spend the night last night. I didn't make them go to school today. They're all upstairs together. This whole situation is terrible for everyone involved and it could have been completely preventable. I don't pity my wife. I hope she has one label for the rest of her life. Cheater. I wanted to follow her. I want 
want people to know she is a prominent optometrist in our area. This could very well hurt her business of word spreads, which it very well may. Thank you for listening. If you've gone through something similar, I'd love to chat. What should I do? I can't believe the original poster here actually took his wife back after he found out she was cheating for the first time. I think for most people, the relationship would probably never be the same again. But it sounded like he just wanted it to go back the way it was before so bad he just went along with it and thought she had changed. But there's nothing to say in this entire story that the person she was cheating on him with originally was even one of the two men that he caught her with in their bedroom. In fact, the one that she admitted to could be a different person than the location that he saw when she was supposed to be at the yoga studio, which could be two different people from the people that she was cheating with when he walked in in the bedroom. So if those are all four different people, that means she was cheating on him with four people at the same time. Not literally in the same moment like those last two, but that she was juggling some sort of relationship with all four at the same time. I get the sense that the wife knew how bad the OP wanted the family to stay together and how far he was willing to go to make that happen because he stayed with her after she admitted she had cheated on him that she just wanted to push the boundaries because she thought she could get away with it. In other words, she must have thought that, oh, if that was okay and he'll forgive me for that, he'll probably forgive me for this. But let me know how you see the situation and what kind of advice would you give to somebody who was in this position? My stepson is in love with my daughter. Only people within this household know what's going on. My husband and I have been married for 12 years. We were both previously married before we met and I came into the marriage with two daughters and he came into the marriage with two sons. We have one 11 year old son between us and my daughter's ages are 20 and 18. My stepson's ages are 19 and 17. So the older kids are all essentially one year apart. Both stepsons have lived out of state with their mother until a little over a year ago. My younger stepson wanted to move in with us, which was fine and great. He's a good kid and wanted to attend public school after being homeschooled his whole life. My 18 year old daughter and him are both seniors in high school and attend the same school. They have what I thought was a very close sibling bond. They drive to school together, take some of the same classes, have some of the same extracurricular activities. They get along great. Recently, my stepson has been moody and depressed and said that he is unable to sleep at night because he has too much running through his mind. My husband took him to see a doctor about it and the doctor diagnosed him with anxiety and depression. My husband tried to talk with him more about what's on his mind and my stepson confesses that he has feelings for a girl and can't stop thinking about it and was worried she didn't feel the same way. My husband told him to just tell the girl how he feels, put it out there, see what she says. So, he did. Last night, my stepson told my daughter that he has feelings for her and has for quite a while. My head is not clear and I can't recall at this moment exactly what was written, but my daughter showed me the Snapchat messages, which she didn't want to screenshot because then my stepson would know. So I saw them once before they disappeared into the Snapchat void. I immediately told my husband, who then went to speak with my stepson about the situation and basically told him it was wrong. Understandably, my daughter feels emotionally violated. She has lost all trust in him and no longer feels comfortable around him. We have had to essentially keep them separated for the past 24 hours because my stepson feels horribly awkward and my daughter is experiencing some trauma over it. It is an extremely uncomfortable situation for all involved. Here is where it goes downhill. In my eyes and in my daughter's eyes, this is disgusting and perverted. I truly apologize if that offends anyone. That is not my intention. I am having a very difficult time looking at my stepson the same way now. My first reaction was to send him straight back to his mother, but I didn't say so and just kept my mouth shut. My husband and I had time to sleep on it and talk more about it today. And it turns out he sees nothing wrong with the situation and says, people love who they love. Who am I to judge? I do not feel this way. I am protective of my daughter and her feelings. My husband's parents feel the same way he does. I was raised in a family that would not think this is okay on any level. Keep in mind, my daughter and stepson have been raised as siblings, basically since they were each four years old. It's not like they just met and became step-siblings recently. It is clear my husband and I will not agree on whether this is right or wrong. We need a therapist stat to help us navigate this or our 12-year marriage and 15-year relationship is going to be destroyed. The tension in this house right now is worse than any anything I have experienced in my lifetime. Please help me. Am I being completely unreasonable in the way that I am viewing this? Am I making a big to-do about nothing? How do I handle this? How do I protect my daughter without alienating my stepson? I need all the help I can get right now. Thanks in advance for any advice or support or just real talk that you can give. Jumping into the future, there is an update. I posted here exactly 200 days ago about my stepson confessing his love to my daughter. I had also posted the same topic on the parenting sub and the majority of the responses I got there 
were that there wasn't anything gross or creepy about my stepson telling my daughter that he loved her. In fact, every adult we talked to about this incident wrote it off to normal teenage boy hormones. I vehemently disagree and decided to heed all the advice we got from outside sources and move past it. I shouldn't have done that. Here is the update with the basic pertinent background information included for those that don't recall. My husband and I have been married slash together for almost 15 years. We were both previously married and he brought two sons ages 19 and 17 years old into the marriage and I brought two daughters ages 20 and 18 years old into the marriage. We have one son together who is 12 years old. Up until two years ago, both of his sons lived with their mother in another state and my daughters and our young son lived with us. His youngest son, 17 years old, turning 18 in 26 days, moved in with us two years ago. It has been a very rocky road for everyone adjusting to him living here. Before moving in, he was homeschooled his whole life and very much sheltered from the real world by his mother as much as humanly possible. He is extremely socially awkward and has no idea how to make friends or interact with people whatsoever, despite our best efforts to help him. Because he and my 18-year-old daughter were in the same grade, juniors when he moved in, they just graduated in June, she basically became responsible for him as his only friend inside and outside of the school. She has hated it all along and I don't blame her, but my husband feels sorry for his son because he is incapable of having the social skills that most kids that age have. This past winter, our family was in turmoil after stepson sent a text to my daughter one night telling her that he was in love with her. Understandably, every ounce of trust she had in him was destroyed and she felt violated and disgusted. My immediate reaction was that stepson needed to get out of this house and move back with his mother because my daughter would never feel comfortable around him again and neither would I. Every adult we talked to about this said that I was making a bigger deal out of it than needed to be and that we needed to address the situation and move on from it. So despite my instincts telling me otherwise, that is what we did. Two days ago, my daughter texted me asking me to come to her room immediately. When I go upstairs, she is sobbing hysterically and tells me and shows me that my stepson had placed his phone in her room while she was in the shower and recording a video of her getting dressed. After she went back to her room from the bathroom, she went through his phone and found that he has been doing this for quite some time because there were numerous videos of her changing and undressing dating back to at least six months ago. He had been putting his phone in there while she was showering and then after she leaves her room, once she dresses, he would sneak in and grab his phone back. Many of the videos had her completely exposed. I told my husband that the kid needed to get the F out of my house now, that I didn't even feel comfortable with him here. My husband once again played the, he's my son, I can't just throw him out card, and I said BS to that. Stepson is a mentally ill pervert and I will not have him in this house as long as my daughter or I are here. That trust is gone and he absolutely disgusts me now. I took his phone from my daughter and he will not be getting it back. Now my husband and I are at major odds because although my husband admits what he did is sick and unacceptable, he's responsible for him since he's a kid and can't just throw him out and get rid of him like trash, even by sending him back to his mother. The next morning, my husband had time to sleep on it and realized I was right. We need to protect my daughter and she is at risk as long as stepson stays in this house. Within eight hours of the incident, I took my daughter and left the state for a week of vacation that had already been planned, though we were not supposed to leave for a few more days. In the meantime, my husband spoke with my stepson's mother and she agreed he needs to go back to her. He has a stepsister there too, so I am truly concerned for that household as well. I wanted to call the police, press charges, but because he is under 18 and my daughter is over 18, my husband was of the impression that it would basically be like pressing charges on my husband since my stepson is not 18 yet. I have purchased a one-way ticket back to his mother's. He will be gone before we get home from vacation. She is going to get some mental health treatment if that's what she needs. I cannot and will not ever trust my stepson again. He is not showing that he is remorseful about what he did. He's remorseful that he got caught. He has continued to lie about everything since getting caught. He admitted he did it, but said it was only a few times and only started to do it recently. I have video evidence that proves otherwise. So basically what I want to say is, if you ever have a situation like the one we had 200 days ago, don't blow it off and chalk it up to hormones or let anyone tell you that it's not unnatural or unusual. I wish I had listened to my gut at the time. I hate to think how much more this could have progressed if we hadn't found the camera. My daughter is going to need a lot of therapy to overcome this. He is a predator, plain and simple. Jumping into the future, there was one final update. It's been about a year and a half since I last posted and since we last saw my stepsons. Here's the update. We haven't seen either of my stepsons since the one who violated our trust was put back on a plane to his mother. The reason for this is our request was that he could not return to our home until he had been properly evaluated by a healthcare professional and received appropriate therapy and or counseling. To this day, this still has not happened. Not one single appointment for the evaluation or counseling. She is putting it in God's hands. I'm not 
not even kidding. That is the truth of it. My stepsons are now 21 and 19 years old. The one who didn't live with us is welcome anytime and has been told this many times. He chooses not to visit and rarely has contact with my husband over text. He's always been that way despite our efforts. In the 16 years since she and my husband divorced, neither boy has been to a doctor or a dentist one single time unless they were with us. We saw them once or twice per year. My daughter is doing absolutely amazing. Within a month of the big blow up, she got a job and was promoted to manager within weeks. She works extremely hard and bought herself a brand new car and moved into her own apartment in a really fancy new apartment complex. She's happy and thriving and making her way through life and we couldn't be more proud and relieved. So what should we do from here? I'm kind of shocked that not one single person told her that this was weird or confirmed how she felt about this. Everyone she asked, even on the sub, said that this was totally normal. I mean, maybe you can make that argument if they were just completely untethered, but they both share a 12-year-old sibling. So if they did get married and have their own kid, their brother, the shared sibling, would be the uncle to that child related from both sides. That would be very weird. Maybe not in a biologically ancestral way for the kid, but it's not something you see every day. But the whole point of this is that the daughter didn't even like this guy, and I actually think that the stepson probably doesn't even like this daughter, but he might just be too socially awkward to build other connections to other people, so he's kind of cannibalizing the only people that he knows. The whole situation where he had been filming her is absolutely sick. You are deeply violating someone when you do something like this in a way that I don't think the stepson even understands. And somehow the dad didn't seem to understand it at first either. He had to sleep on it in order to see the magnitude of how wrong this was. We don't know this part of the story, but due to the fact that the husband was originally trying to vouch for him and saying that you can't help who you love, I can only assume that he probably told those same things to the stepson himself. And maybe the stepson saw that as some sort of approval, approval to keep going down this path. Because if you remember, the stepson didn't act on anything until he was diagnosed with anxiety, told his dad what was going on, and his dad's advice was, well, tell the girl how you feel. So it kind of seems like to some degree, the stepson is relying on the dad's approval to keep going forward with this. And maybe that's how he interpreted this whole situation in some sick, twisted way. So if these were your kids, how would you handle the situation? Let me know down below. Am I the jerk for going on an outing without my partner? I'm a 21 year old male and I've been together with my partner, who's a 22 year old female for about two years now. For a bit of background, my partner and I live in two different cities, and so we were only able to meet up maybe once or twice a week. This past week, however, I told my partner that I did not want to meet up as the gas prices were extremely high, and as the primary driver between the two of us, she doesn't drive, I felt that my request was reasonable. To my relief, my partner was extremely understanding and made other arrangements to hang out with our close mutual friend group. Things were going fine until I found out that my partner and our friends were going to watch a movie that we were both dying to watch. As a result, I began to feel a bit of FOMO and told my partner that I wanted to see her after all. Without missing a beat, my partner immediately canceled on our friends and began to get ready for our meeting. At the same time, one of our mutual friends messaged me to ask if I was interested in taking my partner's place since they had already purchased a ticket for her. I agreed and told my partner that I was going to see the movie with our friends. She then got extremely mad at me and said that had I told her earlier, she could have transited and made it in time for the movie as well. Now, the only way for her to make it in time would be for me to drive and pick her up. However, I reminded her that I initially didn't want to pick her up due to the distance between us as well as the high gas prices. In the end, I went to the movie without her as I felt that it would have been a waste of a ticket and that my partner should have known how badly I wanted to watch the movie. Now that the movie is over, I have been trying to reach my partner but she has not read any of my messages. So am I the jerk? Does this one win the award for the most obvious jerk of all time on this channel? I think it's up there. Top 10 easily. So let me get this straight. He says he doesn't want to hang out with her because it's too far and gas costs too much. So she makes other plans to go to a movie. He says he does want to hang out with her, but not because of her, but because of the FOMO about the movie. So she cancels on everyone to hang out with him. And since she canceled, there's an available ticket that they invite him to go to the movie instead of her. So basically what he did was he ousted her out of the movie, took her spot and thought that she would be okay with it all under the guise of cancel with them so you can hang out with me. But she didn't get to do that either. So she ended up with doing nothing. She didn't get to go to the movie with her friends and she didn't get to see him. And he took her spot. <laughs> This is crazy. Crazy that he would think there's any possible interpretation where he is not the jerk. So if you somehow see this differently, let me know how and why down below and jerk or not a jerk and why.
When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories in this series, use the playlist at the top of the description. And next time you live stream, use the cream of the crop music. Search for cream of the stream on Spotify or whatever music platform you use for copyright free music to use for your stream. It's free cream of the stream. Either way, thanks a lot for listening. We'll see you guys next time.